Hey, it's Tony Bruschi from Real Ghost Stories Online. As we enter into another year of the podcast, I can't thank you enough for listening and hopefully your support. With more options than ever before for podcast listening, supporting this program and becoming an extra podcast person is more important than it ever has been in the past. And I always try and make it worth your while to be a supporter. For only $5 a month as an EPP, an extra podcast person, here's what you get. You get access to our bonus episodes, brand new ones every single week, more than 300 in the archive that you get with our best ghost stories. You get a free e-copy of our best-selling book, Real Ghost Stories, Haunting Encounters Told by Real People. You also get the audiobook version of it, as well. In addition to that, you're going to get advanced episodes of our program released to you weeks before they go to the public and they're commercial free. So if you're a big listener of the show, you want to cut the ads out, you want to cut this plea out as well, become an EPP, an extra podcast person at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. You're going to get all of that. On top of that, you also get access to our video archive of our episodes of Seeing Ghosts with new episodes coming in 2020. You get advanced ticket sale options when we go and do live shows so you can get seats before everybody else and a whole lot of other extras throughout the year as a supporter of our program for only $5 a month. Please consider supporting the show you guys spending that $5 a month as a whole is what keeps this alive. Without the support, we will not exist. So if you listen, if you've been an EPP in the past, please consider signing back up to be an extra podcast person and help this show survive. We love doing it, but we can only do it with your support. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. And thank you for your support. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, who is the ghostly little girl that one child seems to play with every single day? One parent searches for answers as to who this child is, what she wants, and why no one else can see her besides their daughter. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855 855- 853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Yep, it is. And 855-853-4802 is our phone number to share your real ghost stories with us. Write it on the website realghoststoriesonline.com or you can uh, always uh, support our program, get all of the episodes, get them commercial free, and get yourself hooked up with all the EPP bonus episodes, brand new ones every single week. To get all that, just go over to uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Five bucks a month makes you an EPP, an extra podcast person. Get all the extras, support this program, and keep it on the air. You should truly make it your New Year's resolution to listen to a ghost story a day. That's uh, that's so much more exciting and fun than any sort of workout plan or any BS like that that everyone jumps into uh, into the uh, the New Year. Did you do you do resolutions, Carol, or or anything like that every every year? Or just kind of like eh. no, not really. No, I, I was thinking about doing one in the New Year about reducing my sugar intake. Okay. Um, But last time I really did one was I decided to become a vegetarian, and that's been 20 plus years ago. Kind of I did really well with that. Yeah. But I don't normally do them. But when I do, it's I I don't want to fail. That's the thing. Sure. So I'll think about it for a while. You got to kind of say like one ghost story a week. Yeah. Who can't commit to that? I think a day, every day, a new ghost story. Just listen. If you listen every, if you 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 subscribe, you'll get more than one a day. Really. So. Well, you know. And if you just started listening, there are so many episodes. <laughs> There's a lot to listen to. You could probably listen nonstop and it'll get you to about the 4th of July. <laughs> if you took all of the hours of the program uh, from all the years, uh, you, you, maybe not quite. May, at least Easter, I would think, maybe. Yeah, probably. At least. I don't know when Easter falls this year, but yeah, yeah I'm kind of with you. You could go Taking nonstop. out time to sleep, regular sleep schedule. Other than that. You would never stop listening. Yeah, I, I think you'd be uh, you'd be good. So lots of content there for you. 
uh, to uh, to enjoy. I think it'll be interesting someday when I kick it. They can uh, at my funeral take a look at all the hours because uh, they'll be able to tabulate it. At least the podcast life of of my broadcast career. Uh, I, who knows what the on air hours were, but that was twenty years. Uh, but uh, just the podcast hours, you can tabulate and they can go. He was he told you know however many years of ghost stories nonstop by the time he kicked it, and then uh, it'll be great. And then poof, Tony shows up at the service. Then I sit up in the casket and I'm like, ha, 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 I just have a terminal illness. This is one of those parties that you have <laughs> uh, that where I can like actually enjoy it. I'm going to be dying in a week or two, but I'm here tonight. <laughs> I wanted to be at my own funeral. That's how it goes. I like, know. why? You know, I always think it's kind of interesting, you know, people who really plan that service out, because to be honest... That's not for me. That's for everybody else. So they no. can do all the planning. You can do whatever you want to with me once I'm dead. As long as you guys are all happy with it, I'm good. I, uh, I put but if a- there's going to be a party, I don't want to miss it. So I'd rather yeah. that happen before I die. I put it in, uh, when I had uh, Harper, um, I decided it was time that I should probably put a will together. So I did. And in it, I actually, there's like, there was a section and there was like one of those like fill in the blank wills. <laughs> and one of the sections was like, you know, funeral arrangements and things like that. Like, do you have any wishes? So I believe I put in there, there's going to be karaoke uh, at mine and uh, a bar. And um, I think there's some other odds and ends in there that when I showed it to people, because I believe you signed it. I believe you were a witness. Of oh, it. I think I did. I think you were a witness of this. And this is, you know, seven, eight years ago now. And uh, I think I said at that time and I'll say it again. I hope I don't die first. Yes. Because that would be kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Uh, so that that's in there. I do have to change where I want to be buried because I, I changed that up. I originally, and here, I'm marking it on the record right now on this, this thing. So if anyone ever needs to go, are you sure that's where he wanted? Because I think he changed it. It's on this episode right here. Um, I originally wanted to be buried back in, uh, I don't even know where I want to be buried now, but I was originally wanting to go back to Wisconsin, uh, to the, the the cemetery that I grew up by. But it's no one. I mean, my kids are not going to be living up there. I'm probably not anyway. Um, so I want to be somewhere where they can visit somewhat regularly. And I, I can't stand the cold. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm taking that off the list. I don't want to be in that cemetery. I'll find some other nice place where I can go be a zombie someday. But I, I think you're just in a nice urn, and your kids can just take you place to place. I, I don't. I, I I don't know. I have a a hang up on the whole uh, being cremated thing. I'm you know if that's what you want, that's uh, you know I'm not against it for anybody. It's just I don't want that. I don't like that idea. I want to okay. have. I want the option of being a zombie. And I don't get that when you get burned. No, if you if your body's gone. Do you think it's weird though? Like every animal I've had in my adult life, I had cremated and I've kept them. That's not weird. You don't think it's weird? Because I've had people over and they're like, oh, that's a like there's a couple of them in really interesting looking boxes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's my dog Jim. Sure. And, and it always like like people will jump. Like <laughs> I kind of like <laughs> The idea of sort of having them around. I don't have a problem mm-hmm. with that. You could really fuck with people and put their ashes into like what looks like a Pizza Hut Parmesan shaker. And now that would fuck with people. Oh. <laughs> They're like, like if I was dumping somebody's ashes <laughs> physically out. Yeah. 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 Especially on my pizza that because then you got to order another pizza and it's like 45 more minutes. Like I think your Parmesan is like kind of going bad. The one with Tony on it. <laughs> this Parmesan doesn't taste right. Oh, that's Jim. <laughs> Jim, is that a new brand of Parmesan? Jim was a good dog. <laughs> My dog 20 years ago. <laughs> Why didn't you put him in something else? I just had a Parmesan shaker. It worked. And yeah. I liked it. <laughs> he liked pizza. It was a great way to remember him. <laughs> and I can see him like in the shaker, like in a wooden box. Who can see him? No, th- I don't think that's weird. There- there's a lot of things that are interesting that people do with ashes. Um, and we can talk more about that um, after our first story. Cause I actually have some interesting, I-, I I'm curious as to what, what other people's thoughts are on, on some of these things um, that I found kind of odd or-, or different, but I think a lot of this is more so perception of, uh, you know, what have, what have you seen? What are you used to? What are you not used to? Um, as far as, you know, I don't think there's really any real right or wrong. It's just kind of what are, what do we understand of, of what, what people do? B- people grieve in different ways. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go over to our, uh, 
our first story of the day. Uh, and it just says, my uh, cousin and his wife tried many times to have a baby. After many attempts, it finally worked. They had a baby boy. Unfortunately, the child was, bo- was born with some complications. And over a period of a month, he passed away at home. It was a very hard time for the family to take. Every chance my cousin had to lash out at a family member, he took it. His wife couldn't take it and left him. The grief was too much for him to take, and he ultimately went to the gravesite with a handgun. While heavily intoxicated, sobbed at the tombstone uncontrollably. A group of people saw him in this state and called the authorities. When the police showed up, it was a very tense standoff. With guns drawn, they surrounded my cousin and took him into custody. After a few days in jail and a few days in the mental hospital, he was finally released. Everyone was, of course, very concerned for him. Surrounded by family and friends, we tried to console him the best way we knew how. Grief is different for every person, and time is the only real healer. That's all I could tell him. He seemed to accept my advice and started the healing process. This is when things started getting strange. I drove him to the grave again to put flowers down and say a few prayers. On our way, there... My radio came on by itself and started playing Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. First, the radio came on without us touching it. Second, I have a five-disc CD changer. It was the 90s in my car, and it chose this song out of a hundred to randomly come on. At the grave, it was unseasonably warm for a November day. The clouds farted and the sun became ridiculously hot. We said a prayer and get out of there way faster than we had planned on due to the heat. November in Baltimore is usually pretty cool, so this heat wave was very uncharacteristic of the area. We went out to dinner, and by the time we got back to his house, it was dark outside. All the lights were out in his house except for the baby's bedroom. We saw the light come on as we were pulling up to the house. Knowing there was nobody in the house, our hearts dropped. We went inside. I walked into the baby's room and turned the lights off. My cousin was too shaken to even go into the room. I poured us a few whiskeys and put some upbeat music on to lighten the mood. Mix 106.5. Listen, radio station, so I had to do a radio voice. Mix 106.5 is a pretty mainstream station, mostly playing Hootie and the Blowfish and the Goo Goo Dolls. More 90s. I'll be damned if that same Nine Inch Nails song came on again. I just turned it off, and as I did, we lost all power in the house. About five minutes later, the power came back on, and the baby's bedroom light was on again. We got out of there and went to my place. He and his wife ultimately got a divorce and sold the house. Every time I hear that song, it all comes back. Well, I'd say what's what's more paranormal than anything else from a radio standpoint, a hot AC station playing Nine Inch Nails in the 90s. That right there says that is paranormal. And And that song is a really dark song. And Johnny Cash did a version of that. Mm -hmm. That's really dark. I didn't know that. Yeah, and it's very, very slow, and it, he, it was one of the last things he recorded. Wow. So he was old at the time, and it's just a dark song. Yeah, very much and so. I, like, the beginning of that story with him being so distraught, and that just breaks my heart when I hear stories mm-hmm. like that. Because I was like, please don't arrest him and throw him in jail, because he's just hurting. Yeah, or shoot That's him. That's what went wrong. I was afraid there was going to end and the cop shot him or something because, right. I mean, and he had a gun. So, I mean, I could see, you know, well, this is not going to end well, but uh, well, I, and at that point, they're trying to probably keep him from yeah. hurting himself, you know, yeah. if they have to. And you got an unstable person in a graveyard waving a gun around. I understand right. that situation and I don't wouldn't fault them, but it's like, please don't end that way. But at the same time, you know, he's just so distraught. He doesn't know yeah. what to do with himself. That whole, that kind of story always just breaks my heart. Yeah. But then to go to the house and that light comes on. Yeah. Ew. That, uh, and just the, the, the song consistently playing yeah. at odd times. The, the CD changer just going to that song. Mix 106.5 that plays Hootie and the Blowfish and the Goo Goo Dolls. Playing Nine Inch Nails nails. doesn't make any sense at all. And and the thing is, that stands out to us like a sore thumb. The average radio listener doesn't. But trust me, it would not be on any hot AC playlist in 1998 or whatever. Oh, no, it was on the rock station. I worked at a rock station at that time. Yeah, strictly rock. It It did not cross over. Never. So, yeah, it just just wouldn't happen. 
So that, that to me seems like it's somehow, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it some frequency crossed into that one and it was playing that song for a reason. And I just hope in situations like that, and so many of us have been there in our lives where that grief is just so dark and so consuming mm-hmm. that it's hard to see where you go. Yeah. And what he said or she about time is so true. But when you're sucked into that grief, like it means nothing. Like eventually, you know, time heals everything. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. It's the last thing I want to hear right now. Exactly. It it's seems like hard. everything that everyone says to you in those times are, are like, just shut up. It's so trite. And it's it's yeah. just like, and, and people Nobody are. Nobody knows what to say. No, they're well-meaning. They have, and in, in, in what do you say? Because you, you want to show that there's someone here who cares about you, but still anything you say is not going to be met with any sort of acceptance. But, you know, that that's just the thing, though. It's just showing that you're there and you're trying. And I think that's more important than anything is, is just to to be able to try. Don't overdo it. Don't say dumb, sh- super dumb shit like, oh, you know, I went through the same thing when uh, my gerbil died in fifth grade. You know, it's like, shut the fuck up, asshole. But just just being a friend, just, hey, I'm here. I, Did I ever uh, tell you about what happened to me after my dad died? <clears throat> and, and, um... I was, I was like that. I wasn't that dark, but I was really depressed mm-hmm. and really sad because it was one year almost to the day after Doug died, the story that you and I had done yeah. last year. Yeah. And um, so it's one year, four days later, like almost to the day that my dad died. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like that. It was really dark and I was so sad because... You know, it was hard to deal with Doug dying. Then my dad got terminally sick like three months later, and then he died. And it was just dark. So one day I was walking my dog, and I remember exactly where it happened. I was over by Wesley Hospital, and and I was walking, and I kept in my head, I'm like, why? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? And that's all I could think of. And then it was like a voice, like a man's voice. But it was in my head. It didn't come from outside of me. Mm-hmm. But it very distinctly said, because now you know. And I stopped, and I was right by the parking garage, and I stopped. I was like, what the fuck? I did? Like, all I want is some clarity. What does that mean? Yeah. You know? And I was like, what the hell? Well, in the ensuing years, I understand it now, because now I know what that kind of deep, dark grief feels like. And I know what it feels like when people tell you, you know, I guess God needed her more than you did. And those things that I get it, I get what it's like. And you can be that ear and you can, and you know that somebody might tell you the same story 30 times and you're okay with it. Mm -hmm. You just are there for people. And it was just interesting that that one little thing at the time seemed like, what? That was my answer? Are you kidding me? But it was the perfect answer yeah. because now I know what it feels like. It's living. And I it, can help somebody else get through it. And it, I have repeatedly over the years. It puts things into perspective. Mm-hmm. And, and until you, you go through it, you don't have that perspective. It's, just, it's one of the things you have to live through to really get and until you have that experience, you know, there's like so many, you know, big things in life that once you've had it, like, oh, holy shit, that is, a, yeah, that's, that is as life changing as they say it is. But I didn't realize it till it happened. You know, you can kind of like, I'm going to guess it feels like this. And then it's like, oh, holy shit. That's I had no idea. You know, But like that story that you just shared, you know, you like to think somebody that gets that dark and that desperate down the road can help somebody else because they get it and 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 so you help that person up that person eventually helps somebody else up and that's kind of how it works and it was just one of those moments where i was like finally some clarity makes no sense but i got it no and it did make sense it did it did thank you for sharing that uh story with us 855-853-4802 
is our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. We'll talk more about urns in a moment, uh, but <laughs> again, let's... This is like a real yeah. death episode. It is uh, kind of, it's our ongoing theme of ghost stories. Death is usually involved in some <laughs> We don't way. always talk about funerals and urns. <laughs> no, and we don't. Depression and darkness. Going down this road today, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. First, another story. It says, I love your podcast. Not only are you fun to listen to, but your podcast makes me feel like I'm not alone in experiencing otherworldly things. I was hesitant to send my story in, as only my immediate family knows about this, but here it goes. Ever since I was a child, I have seen and felt what I call the little girl. She's a child no older than 10 years old. I can't describe her in detail, but she's wearing a dress, not a timepiece from a specific time frame. I don't know what color it is or whether she's wearing shoes, but I see her. I can't see her details. More than anything, I feel her and her emotions, I can feel her presence. I can't remember when it started, but I was young, around six. I remember waking up abruptly with such sadness, overwhelming sadness. I started crying, sobbing intensely for no reason. As I propped myself to a sitting position, my head turned to the right corner of the room, and there she was, the little girl, looking at me, and I could immediately tell that the sadness was coming from her. I don't know how long I was crying or for how long the little girl was there, but I wasn't scared. It happened a few more times and then things started changing with her. When I was around nine, I woke up startled and scared and feeling afraid. Again, she was standing in the right corner of my room and she was angry. I couldn't see her face, but I could feel her intense anger. I was taken over by fear. I was trying so hard to catch my breath. It must have been a minute and then she was gone. The next morning, I woke up with bruises on my arms and legs and when my mom questioned me, I told her about the little girl being angry and she said that wasn't it, uh, I probably bruised myself in my sleep. This happened constantly and my mom, being a non-believer then, would tell me everything is fine. My aunt, on the other hand, thought it was a spirit tied to the house. When I was 11, we moved and I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. At the new location, she appeared again and again, each time her anger increasing immensely. More bruises, larger bruises. One night it got so bad I couldn't move, I could barely breathe, and I think I actually saw the little girl, shoulders trembling. She had never moved before, and I started hearing whispers in my room, close to my ear, so very close. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. After she was gone, I ran to my sister's room and was so, so scared. The next morning, I woke up with a bruise on my left shoulder in the shape of a hand palm, including the fingers, and all it was was a small handprint. I showed my family and told them about the whispers, and they started believing. I was taken to a church to talk to a priest, and he said to pray for a little girl. I did, but it never stopped. Others said to ask her what she wanted, but I was too scared. Others said don't talk to her, as that can make things worse. We saged the house, had a priest bless our house numerous times, but nothing helped. I can't say that I learned to live with it, but I have somewhat gotten used to it. Eventually, I got married and moved and thought that was it. Nope. The little girl came along with me. But four months into our marriage, I woke up again with extreme sadness. Words can't describe how I felt, like my heart had been broken. And there she was in the right corner looking at me in our new house. My husband woke up and was asking me what was wrong, and I couldn't talk. I was crying so hard. I told him about her. I had mentioned her before, as he had seen the bruises. He didn't fully believe me, as expected, but then later that week we were in bed and we hear whispering. We couldn't tell what was said, but it was directly above us, near our ears. We shot up so fast, so scared, and I told him it was a little girl. The whispering continued for almost 30 seconds. He fully believed me then. Eventually I got the guts to ask her what she wanted, but I Hadn't gotten a response. I'm 35 years old now, at a new house, and still, she's here. I don't see or feel her as often, but she is there. I can feel her here. I can sense her. And she still bruises me every time she's angry. I have more stories about her, but she has only allowed herself to be seen by my brother and I, and heard by my husband. Maybe one day she'll tell me what she needs from me, or she can tell me what happened to her. So we can both find our peace what do you think of that one god that would suck 
Because last thing I want is a kid ghost. Yeah. I don't like because they just make me so sad anyway. Sure. But that's interesting because the ghost is following her. Mm-hmm. So the ghost is attached to her no matter where she goes. Yeah. And what do you do? I mean, but she said she hasn't had the nerve to say, what do you need? What can I do? I, I mean. I think that's what needs to be done more than anything is to find out what what need need can be met here by this this little girl that's basically abusing her uh you know it's yes it's a, it's supposedly a little kid but i don't know i mean it, it's but you know how kids are when they they don't have the resources to express feelings yeah. and explain things so they get angry yeah you know kids start crying or they're screaming they're angry mm-hmm. because you're not getting it Sure. And so that's what it feels like to me. It's like the kid's angry because she needs something that she's not getting. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like unless you address what, if you can figure out what it is and help her move on, you'd be doing her and you a favor. Might be scary. And maybe you get someone to help you do it. You know, someone who has some experience in that sort of thing. I don't know that you can find that person on Facebook Marketplace, but, you know, you could find maybe someone to help you address it. On Tinder. That would be the place to go for that. (laughs) Swiping and swiping and swiping, (laughs) looking for the right person to help you talk to a ghost. Can you help me talk to a ghost? Yeah. And like nobody's nobody says talks to ghosts anymore. (laughs) I mean, it was really popular back when Ghost, the movie, came yeah. out. Yeah, now it's not so much. I mean, right. you see it on eHarmony, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> is that still a thing? I, I don't think know. It is, isn't it? I have no... I mean, obviously, the, the last time I used a dating site was when I met Jen. So uh, I, I have... I couldn't tell you how any of these work other than how they worked, you know, 10 years ago. And, and even... And back then, there was no apps or the the tinder thing or anything like that it was just uh we met on eHarmony we were it was match and eHarmony those were the two big ones back then so i don't even know how these things work anymore it's all just based on looks <laughs> is that how it goes now it's like picture no i don't like that one that one i don't like that person oh, that one looks interesting the whole having to have a paragraph about yourself was too in-depth that uh, too much uh too a bridge too far <laughs> who reads these days <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it, it's an interesting one because this is one of the first ones I think we've had where it's a little kid ghost. There's actually markings going on on a living yeah. being. And I'm honestly not jumping to the conclusion that it's something dark or evil or demonic disguising itself as a child. Um, no, I think that you would have known that by now. Yeah, it, it seems like this time is, has passed. This is legitimately, I, I think, a ghost child that is being a ghost, being a child as a ghost, uh, and doing exactly as you described, acting out the way a child would. So, I think the best thing that they can do is try and ask, you know, what can I do? You know, what 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 is it that you need to try and and resolve this and and make a peace with whatever is going on there. Uh, and I don't necessarily think you have to wait until you see her to do it. No. I think you could talk to her mm-hmm. and, you know, when you're at home. No, yeah, I know? agree. It's like, I get it. You're frustrated. and But there's got to be someone who would know. I don't know where that person lives, obviously. But, you know, there are people who could help with that. Yeah. I think there would be uh, sensitives, people like that. It's just kind of, you know, do some research, dig around a bit. Uh, there are communities out there for that. I have no one to recommend or anything like that either. But um, if you do, some- and you could start like with the paranormal, you know, because lots of cities have the yeah. paranormal teams that go out and investigate homes and stuff. There might be somebody who knows somebody. Yeah. You know? The the thing I would be cautious with that on there is is don't just bring a bunch of investigators in. I think no. what, what they're looking Ask for is them for help on yeah. who to talk to. You're looking for a sensitive of some sort that yeah, can... You're just looking for a resource to help connect you to the right people. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, 855-853-4802, our number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Lauren. I recently called in the show, and I just wanted to share some other stories with you guys. 
Um, so whenever I was younger, I shared a few stories in the past about how I think I might have been like sensitive to some stuff. Um, I still think that I am to an extent, um, certainly not as much as I was as a child, but, um, when I was younger, I was definitely drawn to paranormal things. I always loved that kind of like creepy stuff. And this one instance, I specifically remember this because I was with my younger brother and my grandpa had just moved into this house um, across the street from where we went to grade school. And it was an old house. I mean, it had to have been over, decently well over a hundred years old. And um, the land that the house sat on was right next to, um, like I said, this old church, which was also like over a hundred years old. So we were moving and it was, I mean, it's a small house. So it's not like there's a lot of room for, you know, stuff to go wrong. Like you can pretty much hear everything that goes on in the house. Um, no, no matter where you are in it. And, um, this one day my brother and I went down and we were helping him do some laundry and we had to have been young. We had to have been about, you know, I would say between eight to 10 and we're in the basement and we look over at the curtains and we made a joke because these curtains, um, were like really ugly, like really old florally curtains. And, uh, it was, I mean, they were just, they were ugly. So we were just kids talking about them being stupid. And we went to go put the laundry in the washing machine and we turned around and we're going back up the stairs and we were going to get ready to, you know, make a joke about the curtains again because we were still talking about the curtains for whatever reason. And we looked at the curtains and the curtains were completely different. Completely different. They changed from these ugly, floral, frilly uh, curtains to these weird, like, p- pattern of like a bread maker or a baker or like some sort of chef on them. Um, and we were so scared. We ran up the stairs and told everyone and they were just making, you know, my parents and my grandpa, you know, they were kind of like laughing at us um, since they didn't really obviously believe that the curtains had just changed in a matter of seconds in his basement. Um, so that was, that's one of the stories. Um, another one, I'm not sure if I shared this one recently, but it was over the course of I guess whenever I was in my teens that I had these strange uh, notions of going to I had to be tutored for math I was I did a horrible job of math so I um, had a tutor who would pick me up after school and take me over to her house and it was nice on this you know really nice house on this golf course and everything and while we were on the way to the house uh, we passed a house that had a lake in the backyard and this this lake had a set of stairs that walked all the way down and into the water and I just had the most bizarre um, the notion of always always being drawn to these steps and always being drawn to uh, this area because I like I thought it was so beautiful and something about it was just so mystic seeming and um i don't know i've I've tried to research the history of the land and i know the land in the area has been like really really um you know popular for in being known for uh like native american uh history um you know obviously it's some civil war areas uh out in st louis and it was i don't know i something about it like and even still to this day if i ever go down that road i am so strangely drawn to it and it's not like oh like this is a pretty house like i want to go check it out it's very much like i like something about it is like calling like beckoning to me and i i don't know it's just very very strange and this was also around the same time um i know i've mentioned in stories before that i would see this shadow figure um, you know, follow me around and, uh, kind of he, this thing would show up in my bedroom and in my dreams and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, I, I would be curious to know your insight to think if there is anything connected, um, there potentially, or just the history of the land. Um, 
So, yeah, I just thought I would share these stories as well. And uh, thank you for listening. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Dots. Have you ever had a story like that about the curtains? I don't believe so. I'll start with that. I thought that one was really interesting. Yeah. I've never really heard that. Like, I have heard of things where they think they see something look again and it's not there. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they both saw it. Yeah. That, that was interesting. It's a little but more valid. The other thing is, is that I do think that we all have those places that we're strangely drawn to. But you don't quite know why. Mm-hmm. I get that. And who really knows <laughs> what's drawing you to that? Sure. But, you know, I don't know, like, if, if it's a past life thing or if it's, like, there's some ghostly activity there and they can get through to you. Could be, too. But, yeah, I don't I don't understand that. But I've had places like that before. Like, I feel oddly familiar here. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like I've been here, but I haven't been here before. So I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's deja vu, but then it's like, is there something more to that? Is there a, a link that we are unaware of that we're crossing into when we're in those those moments? And I think everybody has a little bit of that. Like, I don't live by the water, mm-hmm. but... I'm really drawn to oceans. Like I, lo- I love the sound of that, and I've never lived anywhere like that. But I feel very comfortable there. Sure. I feel very scared going over really big bridges. I don't know why. You know, and so I think all of us have those weird things. You know, I've wondered before: is if what is a phobia really? Why am I so deathly afraid of mice? I don't want to be, but I really am, and I don't want to get over it because I don't want to have to face my damn fear. <laughs> Because <laughs> to do that, you got to touch one or something, and I can't do that. Yeah. So it's kind of all tied together, I think. Like, why do you have that? Why do you feel drawn to something or repulsed by something? You know, I don't know. It's it's an interesting uh, interesting thing that's that's like deep in us that we I don't know I do not know the answer to that question. I uh, want to know. I, I'm not sure why is it that, uh, to me, I get weirded out by the idea of people taking others' ashes and turning it, like, into jewelry and wearing it. Uh, so getting back, see that I did that little transition there? Huh? That was huh? very good. Wasn't that good? Very good. That was good. Um, I, this is something that I, I've seen done. I, I have, I believe, family members who've done this. Uh, and the first time I heard about it, I'm like, really? They do that um i mean i think it was presented to me like from like parental figures and like so and i was young so of course anything that said it's like oh that must be weird um but the more i think of it as i get older i'm still kind of like yeah i don't know that is kind of i don't know it's nothing i would do but again it kind of goes back to everyone grieves differently um do you find that what are your thoughts on that of of you know people like sometimes have little vials of some of the ashes of someone and many people I mean, you do. are talking to the girl who has all of her pets i know ashes like i can't even get rid of them but you don't you don't wear them as, as as like jewelry though and then pass them out to i mean it's, it's pets they were your pets but what i'm talking about is like when an in a, yeah. a, a human i kind of get it i kind of yeah. i don't think that's so crazy no because I, I think that it's kind of symbolic of keeping that person close to you. Okay. Like I saw the other day, and I don't even know, probably somewhere I typed in, I have a 14-year-old dog. So now I start getting weird like dog memorial ads, and so, which is really sick because <laughs> I still have a 14-year-old dog. Yeah. But, um, but one of them was like you take your dog's ashes and... And they make this kind of ceramic flower thing for you. And I was looking at it and I thought maybe that makes more sense than just having the urn. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I wouldn't wear the flower, but it turned it into a little piece of art. Sure. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. I, but I've never been one that wants to wear like my dad around my neck. Yeah. I don't, 
I, I don't know. I mean, it, to me, it, it's I don't know that I would feel comfortable doing that. Although, I don't know. I mean, I, I it, it could be one of those things too, where it's like I haven't had a parent pass. Um, so I guess I, I don't really know what that's going to feel like. It's kind of one of those things of when it happens, you'll know what it's like. I don't. I, I can only see what other people uh, have gone through. But again, it's like having a kid or something too. It's like. I didn't know what that was like till I had one. Um, so I, I don't know if my opinion would change at that point. Maybe it will. I don't know. It's just. I think it's kind of like how some people have a loved one, especially yeah. a child that's passed. Yeah. And they keep a lock of hair in a necklace. I could see that. It's kind of the same idea. Sure. Although those are cremated remains versus hair. Yeah. But. I, but I think people do that so they feel that closeness. That makes sense. And, and this explaining it and, and talking about it, it makes it make more sense to me other than just, that's weird. Creepy. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I mean, there's there's something behind this. It's just, it, it's a matter of understanding the mindset and going, oh, okay, I get it now. And that's, you know, we, we need but more I of that. But I never felt really, like, we ended up burying my dad's ashes. Mm -hmm. But, um... I didn't really feel like I needed some of them. Like I have all my pets, but not my dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I don't want to be that child or sibling who's like, well, if you're going to bury dad, I'm taking part of him. Yeah. Seemed like he should all stay together. And yeah, th it just, th I, I didn't really have that feeling that I needed that. Yeah. I, I do see it. I don't know if that to me is like what what makes me kind of weirded out by it is that right there where if you're cremated, okay, but it's like staying all together, all the ashes kind of in one place. I don't know that I'd, I'd want, you know, me separated out to like loved ones. It's like, and everyone gets a parting gift, a nice box of rice aroni, the San Francisco treat, and you get three ounces of me. You know, after the funeral, that just seems a little awkward. I get the rice aroni part, but not the not the separate me out and uh, you know. And I'm kind of like I don't give any shits. It's like no. I'll be dead. If that makes y'all feel better, do whatever you want. <laughs> exactly. I just, yeah, I guess so. It's it's so funny because I really have no wishes. I don't want to be buried though. I definitely want to be cremated. You don't want to do the zombie thing. No, that looks so like God. so much fun. Have you seen you've that, seen Thriller? That looks like it all. You get to dance. Shit, that's gonna be a no, great you're time. Just a zombie for how long? Michael ever. Jackson's gonna lead the dance. It'll be great fun. Then I'd finally learn the Thriller dance. Maybe there'd be that. I've always wanted to yeah. learn that dance. You gotta find the positives here. You gotta, you should reconsider. Really? God, and I'd be stuck with people in raggedy clothing. That's all. It, and that doesn't matter yeah, then. Everybody's the bags. Can you please put on a little foundation and concealer? It's all part of the look. That'd be great. <laughs> Scaring and scare teenagers. It'll be so much fun. I cannot wait to be a zombie. This is going to be awesome shit going down then. So anyway, uh, enough about all that. Uh, if you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. That's an EPP. Make it your New Year's resolution, like I said. Go to ghostpodcast.com and sign up to do that. Or if you like Patreon, that platform is there for you as well. Patreon.com slash Real Ghost Stories. At the least, press subscribe on the platform you're listening to us on so you don't miss an episode of this program. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories online. Ghost Stories.